First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. It's good to see those who have not seen for a long time. Thank you for making it to church. God bless you. Are we able to read together? Now I know that uh, we are a mixed multitude here. So I expect some different accents to crop up. <laughs> Let's read this portion of scripture. Beloved, continue, do not think concerning fairy trials, which is to try you. Some, let's repeat that. You're reading very well today, by the way. You're doing very well today. I'm very impressed. You know, sometimes I tell you to do something to hear. I don't even hear your voice. But today, today you're, you're doing very well. Maybe it should be raining every day. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But that when you may also, verse 14, if you are For the spirit of glory and of God, first of all, on their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. Verse 15. Oh, as a busy body. While you're still standing, let's uh, read the book of James. The book of James. Chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. Verse 2 to 4. 2 to 4. Uh, the reason why I'm telling you to read is sometimes some people get things when they hear, they never forget. Others, when they see, they never forget. Uh, for me, when I see, I never forget. Sometimes I forget what I hear. You can tell me your name and I have to, if I'm really interested, I will find mechanisms of remembering. Uh, so if, if your name is Lucy and I meet you for the first time and I don't want to forget, I will remember Mama Lucy Kibaki. So I'll connect you with something that I cannot forget. All right? You understand what I'm saying? It takes an effort. That's basically what I'm trying to say. So we learn in different ways. Some is what you hear, some what you see. So that's what I wanted to read today. Okay. We read two verses. Let's read together. My brethren, when you fall into, knowing that produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work. And complete, lacking nothing. Father in heaven, have your way in this service. Speak to your people. Give them revelation. Open our hearts and our minds. And let heaven rejoice because we met today. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. And amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to speak on the subject that I've entitled Surviving Trials. Surviving Trials. 
You will be surprised how many people are not able, don't have the capacity, are not equipped to survive trials. And the reason is basically because of how the gospel has been presented and the kind of messages that are preached in most pulpits. Particularly when it comes to charismatic Pentecostal churches, uh, we tend to preach a half gospel, if you may. A half gospel that shows you that uh, when you come to Jesus, no problem will get you. We don't say it in those words, but we present it exactly like I have said it. The gospel of carrying the cross, if you may, has been diluted a great deal. We preach from the benefits of the cross. But we really don't preach the cross, carrying it and the pain and the load that the cross comes with. And so you find a lot of Christians come to church with that belief that once you're a Christian, then uh, you'll have no problem at all. It's almost uh, like even when you become a Christian, uh, you're not even expected to pay rent. <laughs> it's almost like when you're a Christian, you're not even expected to pay for gas. You can't have an accident as a Christian, according to some of these preachers. And when you have an accident, there's something wrong with you. When you can't pay fees, there's something wrong with you. For we have been presented with a gospel that teaches us that, you know, once you become a Christian, everything is cool and dandy and you will never have any fiery trial. Well, brothers and sisters, that's not true. It's not true. For you see, it rains on the just and the unjust. What happens to the Kenyan citizens will happen to you. When there is traffic, you will not have a special road. Hello? Come on, somebody. When the roads have got portals, your cars will go through portals, just like any other Kenyan. For it rains on the just. And the unjust. Now, the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Peter, uh, the portion of scripture read 4, 12. Count it not strange. Count it, it's not a strange thing. In other words, uh, it should not surprise you. This is being written to Christians who have been scattered as a result of persecution. And Peter the apostle comes and tells them, don't be taken by surprise that you're going through fiery trials. Don't be taken by surprise. In other words, you should expect that fiery trials once in a while will come to you. For you see, you have an enemy called the enemy, the devil. Satan, who hates you with perfect passion, who doesn't like you and he will do everything to bring trials, to discourage you, to kill your spirit, to cause you to give up, to cause you to throw in the towel, 
You have an enemy. Please help me touch, touch somebody and tell them you have an enemy. Some of you are afraid of touching. You have an enemy. So Jesus Christ, introducing this subject of trials, says in this world, you will have tribulations. John 16, verse 33. You will have tribulations. He's talking to believers. In this world, oh my God. You will have tribulations. You will have trials. You will have times when things don't go as planned. You will be shocked at what is thrown at you. All right? So it's not true that when you become a believer, everything is going to be smooth. That's not true. In this world, the Bible says, you will have tribulations. Now, tribulations is a very strong word. I think tribulations is even stronger than trials in my little knowledge of English. But then he says, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. But Jesus Christ overcoming the world does not mean that you are exempted from going through trials. Now, I need to teach this a bit here this morning because I'm going somewhere with this. Now, 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 now. Believers go through trials. And believers also go through trials. Follow me this morning. The trials that believers go through are not meant to destroy them. <coughs> I'll be teaching about that in a while. The trials that unbelievers go through are different from the believers' trials. In that, the trials that unbelievers go through are actually meant to nudge them to come closer to God. The trials that unbelievers go through are meant to shake them a bit to think about God. To come and accept that he is Lord. And he has risen from the dead. And that he is Lord. So trials will come, but their purpose is very different. Are we still together? So, but what I'm trying to really put across to you this morning is that you will go through trials once in a while. And the Bible says that you should not count it strange, like something strange is happening to you. You should not think, oh, something funny is happening to me because, you know, my business is not going right. It's a trial. Somebody shout, it's a trial. You'll be tried even in your marriage. I'm sorry to say that. You'll go through trials uh, uh, with people who are closest to you. You'll go through trials with the friends who are closest to you. I mean, God would allow trials to come to you, you know, uh, for a purpose. Now that I have insulated you and I've laid the groundwork, why then does God allow trials to come to a believer? God allows trials to come to you, number one, because God wants to prune you. God wants to prune you. The Bible says that uh, God is interested in you being fruitful. Fruitful, bearing fruit. So in John chapter 15, he says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. So God will bring trials to you so that some things that 
you could be carrying which you don't need to be carrying can drop off. He can cut off some of those things so that you can be pruned. You can be clean so that you can bear more fruit because God is interested more in you bearing fruit. So when he cuts some of the branches, you'll feel pain. You will feel it. And he will remove some of those things so that he can reshape you. Unnecessary parts need to go. Oh, come on, somebody. So that you can grow taller. Now, if you have planted trees, you will discover that most trees, actually all of the trees, uh, none of the trees will grow taller if you don't prune it. None of those trees will grow taller if you don't prune it. You need to keep on cutting the branches so that it can keep on shooting up. But if you don't, these other ones will keep on shooting on the wrong directions, all right? Instead of growing taller, the tree will never grow. So God says, I'm coming so that I can cut. I want to prune. Trials have a way of pruning us so that we can be more fruitful. So trials, one of the ways that God uses is trials. But the other thing that God uses trials for is for strengthening us. For you see, faith is like a muscle. And the more you exercise your muscles, the stronger the muscles are. And so God will bring trials to strengthen your faith. Your faith will never be strong without trials. That I guarantee. You can pray all you want, but trials come like exercises you're doing in a gym. And the trials have a way of stretching you to a place where you become stronger and I know that sometimes you don't want to go through that trial again. But let me tell you, the lessons and the strength you pull from the trials you have gone through cannot be exchanged for the world. So trials come to exercise your faith. Your faith is made stronger as you go through trials, fiery trials. If only you can hold on and come through it, you will be stronger than how you came in. Somebody say amen. amen. You are much better placed to help somebody who has gone through what you went through and you conquered. Then some, if you didn't go through it, there is no way you can help somebody who is going through what you have never gone through. And I know you can say you understand. But you really don't understand. For instance, the meeting we had yesterday. The widows who have lost their husbands. Their property has been taken. Their money has been stolen by relatives. And they have been thrown out. I, as a pastor, honestly, I cannot really say I understand. Even though, you know, in a little significant intellectual way, I may say, but I really cannot understand that widow who has gone through that experience and that trial is better placed to come and help another widow who has lost a husband. Or who do you want to talk to you? Do you want somebody who's just come from college to come and talk to you when you've lost your husband? Or you want a widow like you? Now that you become a widow yesterday, God forbid, who do you want to come and counsel you? Do you want somebody with a degree that has never gone through it or somebody who has gone through it? So trials come to strengthen you. Trials come to make you stronger. And the more you're holding on to God as you're going through that struggle, your faith, your faith is strengthened. And that you come out stronger. No one is strong in the faith who never went through trials. No one. David 
David would never have faced Goliath if he never went through the trial of the lion and the bear. Going through the trial of the lion and the bear when no one was seeing it is what gave him the guts and the faith to say, bring on Goliath. He would never have dared to say, bring on Goliath if he never went through the lion experience in the wilderness and no one was seeing him killing the lion. If he never killed the bear, then no one was seeing or clapping for him. He would never have said, bring on Goliath. As a matter of fact, if you have gone through those trials that no one has seen, then you can come on on the light and have the guts and say, if God helped me through that trial, he can help me through this one. I am, oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, you can say, oh, I've been there before. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Devil, I know you're bringing some trials to me, but God has fed me before he can feed me now. God has provided uh, rent for me when I didn't know where it was coming from. I know he will provide again. Am I talking to somebody who came to church? And that trial that you went, oh, I feel like I'm going to speak to people here. That trial that you went through way back, God was preparing you to give you strength and to stretch your faith that when you come to this particular trial that you're in right now, you can look up to God and say, you did it before, you can do it again. <laughs> trials. Oh, how I pray that you don't give up in trials. Well, the Bible says, now this is the part that I really don't, uh, I've not reached that part yet, even me. That part, professor, I've not reached that part. That part that says, count it all joy. I have not reached there because I can tell you when I'm going through it, I don't rejoice. Or some of you, oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's, um, it's going on well. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. How many people have reached that stage where it says, count it? Ah. I'll go through the trial, but I'm telling you, I won't be smiling. I have not reached that stage. Of counting it all joy. I'm yet to find a mature person who, when the trials come, they are all laughing and sending flowers and chocolates, counting it all joy. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going through trials, angel. Come on, give me a high five. <laughs> Have you found somebody like that yet? But the Bible says, count it all joy. Trials prepare you. Trials stretch you. Stretch you. In a way, nothing else will ever do. Trials. When you hear somebody who talks from going through trials, it's not like somebody who has never gone through a trial. A true story. Big musical concert. And there were two people who were supposed to sing. One came with a PhD from music, had graduated with a music PhD, came and sang Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. Oh, all the tones were correct. Oh, she hit some high tones there that everybody was baffled, shocked at how that lady could sing. She had gotten a PhD in music. So after she finished, people said, wow. Then came there another lady, slightly elderly, 
singing the same song, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. She didn't have a PhD in music. After that lady finished singing the same song, everybody in the auditorium was crying. Tears were rolling down their cheeks because she didn't sing from the head. She sang from the heart. She had gone through it all and she had seen it and God had brought her through it. And she sang Amazing Grace by John Newton. And the difference was one had gone through the experience and one, it was just in the head. That is a difference. That is a difference. So there was a wow and there were tears rolling down people's cheeks. There's a big difference. Big difference. Trials. Trials. Have a way of maturing you. So the Bible says that let the trials have their way. Because once you persevere, once you go through it, somebody shout persevere. Oh, come on, shout, 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 persevere. Perseverance is a key word in trials. It's a key word. After trials, the next word that comes is persevere. Look at your neighbor and tell them I will persevere. It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. But let perseverance finish its work. There's something that perseverance is doing. Don't hasten it. It says, let the perseverance finish. It, there's a walk. Oh my God. That perseverance is doing in you. And after the perseverance has done its work, you will be perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. <sighs> you still want to hear this message? <laughs> Let the perseverance finish as work. There's something. The grinding is going on. I'm being grinded. Oh, God. Stop the machine. It's enough. God says, let it as painful as it is, as excruciating as it is, as, as, as you're crying and you're feeling it. He says, let it finish its work. Because when it's finished, when that trial, that trial you're going through right now, when it's finished its work, you will be mature. Mature as you. Mature as you. And the big word, perfect. And complete. You won't have rubbish. The small stupid foxes that surround you. Those will be dealt with. Are you hearing me? Those, those, those uh, small ujinga, ujinga. After that trial, you're going to be matured. Your thinking is going to be different. The way you look at life will be different. And maybe you'll not be so quick to talk 
This time you will take your time to talk when you see somebody going through something. But before you are so quick to talk and judge, but now because you've gone through it. Have you ever interacted with old people? Have you? You know, if you interact with old, wise people, not old, foolish people. <laughs> you, know, you know, I want to say here that the Bible teaches that not every old man is wise. Some people miss their stages of learning. In their, in their old age, they learned nothing. So they cannot help you. Any waze ambao wakujifunza kitu. You go and talk to that old man, you just get foolishness. Because he wasted his his years. But they are old people who are wise. And you can come to them with a problem you think is so big. Oh my God, you come to them. The old man will look at you like this. Tell your young man, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down, young man. Second thing the old, old wise man tell you, settle down, please. Breathe in and breathe out. Relax. Because the old man has seen it all. Nothing moves him. He's been there, done it, spent a night and gotten a t-shirt. He'll tell you, oh, relax, 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 relax. I'll tell you, listen, young man, this is nothing. It's part of growing up. This will finish. You will continue. He will tell you, listen, young man, you know, Tough times don't last. Relax. But tough people do. So you have to be tough so that you can pass through this tough time. The tough time is temporary. And by the time you finish with that wise old man, because he has been there before, he has gone through the trial, he has seen it all, he has seen life, you'll come there out of there really encouraged with the confidence from a man who has gone through it. Okay? Trials come to mold us. They come to mold us. Elijah was by the brook Cherith. The brook dried up. When the brook dried up, another instruction was given. <coughs> you see, every time God has got instructions, the brook dried up. God comes and says, leave the brook now and go to a widow. This widow topic is not getting away, is it? Go to a widow. Now, I was doing a study of widows because of the meeting we had yesterday here. In the Bible, widows were the poorest human beings on earth. Widows were the poorest. So God tells his servant Elijah, go to Zarephath. Now, Zarephath in the Hebrew means a place of melting. It's a place of melting. So he tells him, go to Zarephath. And you're going to the widow, a poorest widow. One of the poorest widows. In fact, when the man of God went there, the widow says, oh, oh, oh even us, we don't have anything. You're waiting to eat the last food and die. That's how poor that widow. And God sends you to that widow. We don't have anything. But God was sending Elijah to the melting pot to be melted for the mission that he had for Elijah 
that was waiting for him. So trials come to melt you. Hear me, hear me, hear me good. Trials come to melt you for the mission and the purpose that God has for your future. Oh, come on somebody. God will not use you until it takes you to Zarephath. God will not use you until it takes you to the melting pot. God will not, oh come on, God will not you. You are not fit, you don't fit the mold of God. God has to take you to Zarephath to prepare you in a place that you least expect so that by the time you're coming out of your Zarephath, you will be like Elijah spitting fire. That's what trials do to you. And the man of God had to go to the poorest of the poorest and had to be melted. Three years of melting. By the time he was finishing three years, then he was ready for the mission that God had. And I'm telling you today that the trials that have come to you, they just came to prepare you. Look at your neighbor and tell them they came to prepare you. Oh yeah, it was, it was not meant to kill you. It was not meant to take you out. It was not meant to humiliate you. It was meant to make you. And by the time you're coming out of your melting pot, you will be ready as a vessel to be used by God in whatever capacity. When I talk about to be used of God, I'm not talking about preaching. It can be business. It can be leadership. It can be your career as a professor. Whatever it is that God wants to use, God has called us differently. But for us to be used, God has to bring you to the Zarephath of your life. And Zarephath can be excruciating. Zarephath can be painful. Zarephath can look like it's humiliating but I came to tell you that God will not use you until you come to your melting pot. That is the plan that God has. Trials. Trials. So he says persevere. But then the Bible says that trials Come to move us. And that after you have been tried, then the glory will come. Somebody just give God a round of applause here. <laughs> then glory comes. <laughs> you thought I was dying, I'm not dying. You thought it was over, it's just the beginning. <laughs> Because after the trials, uh, the Bible says in the book of 1 Peter that the glory of God uh, then comes. Uh, and the glory of God is the same as that that Jesus Christ himself had. Uh, and that after I'm done, uh, I'm coming out as a champion. Uh, I'm coming out as a winner. I'm coming out as one who has overcome. I'm coming out as one who is... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them glory is coming after this. Oh, tell them, glory is coming after this. After this, there's a glory that is coming. After this, there's even more money that is coming. After this, there's even more favor that is coming. After this, there's more anointing that is coming. After this, there's even more friends that are coming. After this, there's even more companies that I'm coming. Come on, somebody. Shout hallelujah. Glory. Glory, 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 glory is coming. Stand up on your feet. Shout and say, hallelujah, glory is coming. Give your neighbor two, three, five eyes and tell them glory is coming after this. Tell them glory is coming after this. Yes, I went through it. Yes, they thought I was dead. Yes, they thought I will never come out. But after this, glory is coming. Glory, yeah, 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 glory. After the trial, you will be perfect, lacking nothing, and the glory of Christ will come upon you. Why are you still standing? Let me give you a free of charge. Is that okay? Sometimes, well, let me rephrase. When you're going through trials, you need to really be in prayer. Did you hear me? You need to 
really be in prayer. Why? Because there are trials that you can pray for God to remove immediately. You have to know which ones those are. Okay? And you cannot know if you're not in prayer and in the word. To be able to know what can I pray for God to remove immediately. But there are trials that God will not remove. And he'll want you to persevere through it. Go through it. So there are two types of trials. There are those that when they come, you say, God, remove this. And God, oh, it's gone. But there are those trials that will come and the book of James chapter 1, verse 2 will kick in. save us from the fire. But if you don't go with us through the fire. Hallelujah. God, you have the power to save us from the fire. But if you don't save us from the fire, go with us through this fire. The king will look and say, hey! there's another person who looks like the son of man. So, you have to pray to know which one is it that God has allowed to come to you. But trials have a way of moving us, physically and spiritually. Sometimes you have to be fired out to be fired up. Hello? Of course you're going to be crying when you're being fired. You won't see anything good. But later on, you'll buy me a piece of cake and tell me, thank you, Bishop, for telling me what you told me. Sometimes I'm telling you trials have a way of removing you physically from a place. If it's not physical, it is spiritual. But whatever happens, whether it's a physical movement or a spiritual movement, it's a promotion. It's for glory. It's for glory. Oh, come on, clap if you're clapping. It's for glory. Let's sing that song through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I really want you to sing it. Open up your mouth like your breath in your lungs. Through it all, trials. Surviving trials. You will make it. it. It was not sent to kill you. It was sent to make you a better person. Amen? Can you clap for Jesus one more time? <laughs> Hallelujah. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon His word. Through it all, through, through it, all. it all, through it all.
Father God, I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you give them the grace. Those going through trials, Lord, hold their hand and walk through that trial with them. Give them strength, O oh God, to persevere, to endure, and to come out victorious. Those about to get into trials, Lord, I pray that, Lord, your grace will also be with them, O oh God. Whatever stage you could be in, O oh God, in this life, as far as trials are concerned, I just pray that you watch over us, Lord, and cause us to be victorious, all of us. And let the glory of God, Lord, that we can only get as we persevere through trials, be our portion, Lord. Strength that comes through trials, maturity that comes through trials, promotion that comes through trials, Lord. May these benefits be ours because we persevered and didn't give up, didn't throw in the towel. Thank you, Father. Be with us throughout this journey. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Please put your hands together for Jesus.